domestic terrorists. And they're terrorists, domestic terrorists. A wounded democracy. Our democracy is wounded. And a threat to national security. These new articles state the president remains a quote threat to national security. Should the international community interfere and seek to re-establish democracy in the USA? <laughs> Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Yes that's right, last two weeks of the presidency of Mr. Donald Trump. He got the people riled up and he pretty much said this is the last stand yeah I want you people to go to Capitol Hill and I want you to show them what we're about. They ransacked the building, they went in, they started going nuts. And then you had people that have normally been towing the line with the US like the BBC, like the bumbling buffoon that we know as Boris Johnson. You had even these guys take digs. That America which likes to lecture the rest of the world on how to be a good democratic society is so seeing its own shining beacon kind of looking rather tattered. Damn! And I, and I un unreservedly uh, condemn uh, encouraging people to behave in the disgraceful way uh, that they did in the capital. But that doesn't change the fact that democracy is threatened. I think foreign powers should seek to go there and re-establish freedom for the American people. We gave Iraq the chance to have an inclusive democracy. And take control of the natural resources, yeah? you got coal, you've got timber and of course oil as well. We will seek to protect Iraq's natural resources from sabotage. Bombs should be dropped. That's right, even if innocent people get killed, it, like you know what these people say, you know things happen in warfare as long as the extremists get killed. The drone strikes for example, many have argued they create more terrorists than they kill. The night raids in Afghanistan, I, I many have argued yeah, they I, create more terrorists I, I than, they, than they get. I don't disagree with that, I, I think that that's, in, that's conflict. When you invest in but conflict, respect, so when General, you that's your failure then isn't it? Because you yourself have referred to the people your men were fighting in Iraq as barbarians who crawled out of the sewer. You say in your memoir, these were the chanting barbarians American troops had been sent to liberate? Sure. If you, if, if people that think it's okay to drive a car bomb into the middle of a square, into the middle of a marketplace, while to attempt to kill an American and in, 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 in doing so they kill dozens and dozens of civilians, absolutely that's barbaric. Which is true, I think if you refer to terrorists you call them whatever you want, but you said these were the chanting barbarians American troops had been sent to liberate. You weren't sent to liberate terrorists. Sounds like you're talking about Iraqis. Sir, uh, look, the, the, it's the, from the, your the, words from your memory. The, the, decision, the decision of Iraq. And then a vassal leader should be installed that will be favorable to the Middle East. How long would you stay in Iraq for? Forever? I would stay as long as American interests are served by being in Iraq. I don't know how long that would be. But that's not the question. The question what about now. Interests? That's not the question. And then, of course, a permanent military base should be established just so, you know, things are kept in control. But Iraqi lives and freedom matter greatly to us. Well, all of this takes place and has taken place in Iraq. Yes in Afghanistan. In fact William Bloom has uh, compiled a book. I have compiled a list since the Second World War of more than 50 governments the US has attempted to overthrow. It's a remarkable record. And no they are not the evil countries, they are democratic nations. But you see none of this has even been considered. And if it gets said I'm sure the person gets a surprise knock on their door. They trespassed on private property. A cop was killed but we could see images of cops taking selfies. Not to mention that of course a cop died as well. Officer Sicknick is the fifth person to die in Wednesday's violence. And here's another clip that we saw of the barricades being opened for these people to literally walk in. I think the question is, although we know the answer because we saw the BLM marches that took place and the first thing that people said was Covid mate what's going on with Covid? Now the US is leading in Covid 
and I didn't hear a single news story mention COVID. Had the Muslims or the blacks thought about doing something like this? Mate, just thinking about it, we would have been handcuffed and shot in the nostril. There had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday. There wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently. And not to mention, Twitter has finally decided to, <laughs> to ban the President of the United States of America. Twitter, yeah, is now in authority to ban the United States of America's president. Silicon Valley oligarchs are more powerful than the President of the United States and they want you to know it. They didn't ban him when he was inciting violence against immigrants or, or Muslims or when he was fanning the flames of World War Three. Nah, nothing mate. Now suddenly when their own security is at stake, oh damn, we gotta shut him up now. Now what's interesting here is who decides yeah, and what's the criteria? I thought this whole saga was very interesting because it exposes the hypocrisy of uh, the United States. I'll leave it there guys until next time. What do you think? I like turtles. Assalamu alaikum.